So, should you upgrade to the new melee weapon that's going to drop with the Primal Dragon update? Well, that's a good question, uh, and we're going to see if it's worth it. Well, of course, the update isn't out yet, and on the Alpha, we no longer have access um, to the new items, really. But we can make do with what we've already got. Put it simply, the Blade of Dragonfire is a melee weapon, essentially a direct upgrade from the Aspects of the Dragons. Now, you can't upgrade the Aspects of the Dragons to the Blade of Dragonfire, because this is a drop from Primal Dragons. However, it is basically the same sword, it's the same family. As for his stats, well, hmm, that's a little bit confusing, because they seem to have changed quite a bit. On the wiki, it seems to just have a base damage of 250 and a strength of plus 150. However, seven days ago when I actually initially tested the new update items, the stats were plus 300 base damage and plus 180 strength. But at other points during last week, the weapon also gave base magic find. Although I think it makes more sense to go off what we see on the wiki. 250 base damage, 150 strength, a slot for a gemstone, and also a right click ability basically identical to the aspects of the dragons, only just slightly better in terms of damage. Now an upgrade to the weapon like an aspect of the dragons seems pretty good. Let's be real, the Aspects of the Dragons has kind of been left in the dust at this point. We've got many weapons that are better. However, it's still a solid shout in earlier game. Now, when we actually take a look at the regular Aspects of the Dragons, we have plus 275 damage and plus 100 strength. Meaning that with the Dr Blade of Dragonfire, we gain plus 25 base damage and plus 50 base strength. That's if the wiki is right, because I'm not 100% convinced. So... Anyway, all we can go off is the wiki. So, the wiki is basically telling us that the Blade of Dragonfire is better than the Aspects of the Dragons, but it's not massively better. How about a weapon like the Livid Dagger? How does it compare? Well, it gives us plus 210 base damage, which the Blade of Dragonfire exceeds, plus 60 base strength, which the Blade of Dragonfire massively exceeds as well. There are other perks, but in terms of straight up damage, the Blade of Dragonfire should be pretty substantially better. How about the Felthorn Reaper? Well, the Falthorn Reaper gives us plus 275 base damage, which is, in theory, 25 more than that of the Blade of Dragonfire, and plus 115% crit chance, as opposed to the strength that we gain with the Blade of Dragonfire. However, the strength that we gain with the Blade of Dragonfire is actually 35 more than the crit damage that we gain with the Felthorn Reaper. Of course, this gives us plus one swing range and its right-click ability. In terms of straight-up damage, I mean, realistically, these weapons should be quite similar. And this weapon is around about 48 to 50 million coins. How about something like a Shadow Fury? Even slightly more better at 56 million coins. Our damage is plus 300 at base, plus 130 strength, and plus 30% crit damage. We get 50 more damage than the Blade of Dragonfire. We get 20 less strength, but we get 30 more crit damage. So the Shadow Fury is going to be better in terms of straight up damage than the Blade of Dragonfire. And you should think, well, that's where it stops, but it's not. And that's because the Mythic and the Dragon Pet buffs both the Blade of Dragonfire and the Aspects of the Dragons, giving both swords an extra 50 damage and 30 strength. The Ender Dragon Pet also buffs most stats by 10%, however, this isn't directly going to... I mean, it will affect the sword, of course, but I don't really think we should take this into account. We should take this into account, because this is a direct perk that affects the weapon. And now, if you were using a Mythic Ender Dragon Pet, and you compared it to the Shadow Fury um, with the Blade of Dragonfire, it's actually much more comparable. It would have the same base damage. The Blade of Dragonfire would have plus 180 strength, which is, you know, substantially more than that of the Shadow Fury. And also, it, it, the Shadow Fury gives you 30 crit damage. So the damage realistically should be very, very similar. However, in terms of odds, it would cost you billions, tens, if not hundreds of billions of coins worth of Primal Dragons um, to actually get the Mythic and the Dragon Pet. Whereas the Shadow Fury costs 56 million coins. But it doesn't end there. Before we go any further, if you are planning on purchasing anything from the Hypixel store, make sure to use code NITROS, it gets yourself 5% off. You should subscribe to the channel, if you watch the videos and you haven't subscribed, please make sure to do so. You should join the Discord server, it's linked in the description of this video. We offer Slayers and Dungeon Carries, so if you need carries, or want to carry and make some coins, make sure to join. Now let's go back to the wiki, and let's take a look at dragons. Because of course you drop this, you drop this weapon from killing a primal dragon, and then you have a certain percentage chance. But how much is this weapon going to cost? And I think we can kind of estimate um, if we just take a look at how rare it really is. Now, the regular aspect of the dragons is around about 3% per summoning eye placed. Now, assuming that you place 4 summoning eyes per dragon, that's a 12% chance for every dragon. Or in other words, around about 1 in 8 dragons. With around about regular prices of summoning eyes, they are a bit inflated at the moment, of course. Um, 
then it, it on average it's going to cost around about between 38 and 40 million coins per aspect of the dragons um now if you just kind of look at that um for everybody who's placing eyes then you can double it yeah the aspects of the dragons is worth 2.5 million coins and it's been a lot cheaper and of course that's because there's way better weapons and that might be the case with the blade of dragon fire to summon a primal dragon you need to use awakened summoning eyes which consist of five regular summoning eyes and four null avoids meaning that every time that you do a four eye dragon with somebody else it's going to cost you about 20 million coins give or take when the prices of summoning eyes deflate um well yeah you've got a two percent chance of getting god mode which spawns you two primal dragons you also have a 15% chance um, of spawning a Primal Dragon at the end of Dragon Rush, um, which has a 11.7% chance to proc. So you can see, just to get a Primal Dragon, it's relatively rare. I mean, it is really rare, really. And realistically, from a, from what we're placing Awakening Summon Eyes, your chances to get a Primal Dragon are probably somewhere between 3 and 4%. Don't quote me, that's that's just rough. That's a rough estimate. I'm not. Uh, that isn't specifically doing the maths. Um, it's give or take 3 or 4%. And then the Blade of Dragonfire, just like the aspects of the dragons from regular dragons, has a 3% chance um, to drop per awakened summoning eye placed. So what that really means is you have a 3% chance of actually spawning a Primal Dragon. And when that Primal Dragon spawns, you have a 12% chance of dropping a Blade of Dragonfire. Meaning that roughly you have around about a 1 in 250 chance to get a Blade of Dragonfire fire from placing 4 eyes of awakened summoning eyes. And that would equate to around about 1.25 billion coins um, per person placing the four eyes. Now, don't get me wrong, it's it's a decent weapon and it will deal de decent damage, there's no debate. But it's going to it's gonna face a similar fate as the aspects of the dragons, whereby realistically, in terms of how much it costs to get one of these, it probably should be a lot more expensive. But it just isn't good enough to be priced at that price that it actually costs. So it's not really a great drop to get because you're just not getting your money's worth. So I assume the weapon's probably going to end up place somewhere similar to a shadow fury at maybe like 50 mil or 40 mil now the weapon itself does deal decent damage of course we've we've already looked at the stats um but in terms of actual damaging figures i mean yeah really not that now of course it's also dungeonizable um not only that it costs dragon essence to upgrade as that, that would probably make sense considering you get it from a dragon now something that will be pretty interesting to see is if the epic and legendary ender dragon pets um buff the blade of dragon fire or whether that's just for the mythic ender dragon um because obviously on the wiki at the moment it wouldn't have changed if it was going to change because it's not out on the main server and at the moment it's just showing of course that it, it buffs the aspects of the dragons like it did before however the mythic ender dragon on the alpha was showing that it also buffed the blade of dragon fire um but yeah it still kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense to I mean, I, you know, the caliber of an Ender Dragon pet, people use the Ender Dragon pet for probably mainly, I guess, damage in the end. Probably mainly Void, void Glooms and Enderman Slayer. So this stat doesn't really matter anyway, because you're not going to be using a Blade of Dragon Fire or Aspects of the Dragons. You'll be using an Atom Split, or you'll be using a Hyperion. It'll still be interesting to see, though. Anyway, this will be the end of today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you do leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.